Welcome back to another edition of the Net Report Podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Richie, we have a good deal of stuff to talk about. Um, we had the second to last, or I guess the last scrimmage of the spring period for football. The spring yes. game is this upcoming weekend along with Rutgers Day. So we got a little bit to talk about there. Some bas- or some football recruiting <clears throat> stuff to touch on. And a very interesting Ooh. rumor developing in the basketball front. Um, but that will save for the last part of the show. So stick around. It's something you're not going to want to miss. Uh, but let's start with football. So they had their last scrimmage of spring this past weekend. Pretty good visitor yes. list. How are you hearing the scrimmage went, and uh, what can you tell us about the kids who ended up on campus this past weekend? Yeah, so um, just starting off, um, we can kind of only say what Greg talked about in the uh, the post game or post scrimmage presser. Um, definitely improvement. Uh, he mentioned to Johnny Shepard, I believe, again. Um, a lot of talk about him lately, but I still see him as a redshirt candidate at the end of the day. Although he he he's been better, so that's that's always big for. Um, for development just in the future going forward. Um, other than him, they talked about the offense. They're starting to get a better hang of it, starting to learn more about the um, the schemes, the reads, all that stuff, all that good stuff. It, it's, a, it's a work in progress, but they're getting better every day, um, every week. The This scrimmage I thought was a little better than the previous one, and Greg kind of mentioned it too as well. Um, he, he did uh, – Chris asked him a question, and he did kind of revert it back to Chris a little bit. Um, but he, Chris did get some good info about Aaron Young out of him. Um, he mentioned he's coming back off injury. He looks, he looks pretty aggressive. Uh, I think Aaron Young's going to play a significant role this season. So we'll see that. Uh, we saw Isaiah Washington get mic'd up one of these weeks. I think it was Tuesday or Thursday. I forget. And, uh, he's, he's, I guess he's probably going to play a significant role as well. I think the wide receiver room's kind of wide open, um, with your top three guys all leaving and Jones, Crookshank and Ryan. Um, who else? What else am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something else. Uh, Rochelle has the ability to be a really, really good player on kickoffs. I know uh, he mentioned Max Melton wants to do it, but I, I know they don't want to risk it, which which seems like a shame to me just because like you see Pacheco doing it in, a, in an NFL, and it's like they didn't want to risk him, but it's he's such a good return man, and that's such a difference maker special teams, especially with, with Rutgers. Rutgers special teams has been a difference maker for – on both sides for how long? So I think it's a mistake not to put Max Melton back there. I know he's cornerback one, but if he can get the ball to your forty yard line every time, it's like okay, do it. But yep. I don't know. That's that's always a tough one. It seems like, but overall, it seems like a good scrimmage, and it seems like spring ball is coming to a close, and the spring game should be uh, interesting. Yeah, obviously they don't tend to show a whole lot in the spring game. But yeah. what do you expect to see? Do you expect to see like you know? the offense like sh- like show out a little bit? Do you expect the defense to show out? I know that the scoring's a little funky with the spring game. Um, what do you expect to see out of the spring game? Yeah, so it seems like the, uh, the scoring is actually going to be a normal game. Um, they're obviously not going to tackle the quarterback because, you know, last year that, that backfired before spring game. Uh, yep. Noah, Noah Vedral. Uh, I guess we could talk about that now. But um, well, that, was in the, that was in the summer. Our summer, it. yeah. I'm sorry. So they're not going to tackle the quarterback um, at all. Do not touch them. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, th- I think you'll just see very basic stuff, nothing crazy. Uh, we always see the tight ends shine in the spring game, and then they disappear all off se- or all season long. Uh, I, I don't see much difference happening there. I think they're going to try maybe chuck a couple balls down the field, see what happens. I don't think they're going to reveal too much, though. I think they're going to be very secretive about everything, which is fine. I don't – I don't. What it is what it is at this point. Um, overall, I think they're going to try to – show out the offense a little more than, than uh, I guess they kind of done it in previous times too, but I don't expect much difference than last year, the year before that, the year before that. Um, I think it's going to be the same thing overall for the next, however many spring games we watch under this regime. I think it's going to be very bland, very casual. I think it's going to be a good drinking day. It sounds like it's going to be pretty nice out. So <laughs> Uh, I expect the tailgates lots to be filled. I expect a uh, beer in most of your hands, if not all your hands, maybe, maybe a couple, uh, a few bloody Marys, uh, mimosas, if you really want to start that early. Um, <laughs> yeah, it should be, it should be a good Saturday, I think. And then Rutgers day too. So you'll, you'll have a combination yep. of a, a pretty decent crowd, I think. And they're doing some kind of boardwalk related stuff for the game mm-hmm. as well, right? 
Yes, uh, I believe they're doing that. They're doing, I think KTR has a tailgate. I think everyone has, every big name has a tailgate for the most part. Um, we're not running one personally because I didn't even think about it until now, but but uh, probably should have. But so then, good. you know, so you, yeah, you know what happens is, you know, like I start running a tailgate and then it's like the cooler has beer in it. And it's like, I don't want to go in the press box now. There's beers here. Like, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen from us, but we'll, we'll have to look for something in the future. I know um, we're, we're working on a couple of different things in terms of TKR stuff going forward in the off season, trying to get guys together and just have everyone and get all the Rutgers fans together, all the message board together, even Twitter, et cetera. Maybe do uh, maybe host some kind of a Rutgers baseball outing, or maybe um, be cool. Maybe uh, you'll you'll see us at the Greg Shannon golf outing. Maybe I'm just saying, it's an idea. I'm not going to be good later but, this, you know, this summer, see. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's off season technically. Yep. So we'll we'll see we'll see. We got some ideas planned. We're going forward. We're going to try to expand this thing a little bit more and uh, try to get uh, more faces to names and stuff like that in terms of the message board. Yeah, that'd be great. We met a few people at the uh, the Geo watch party, or the Night Society watch party uh, when we played Indiana. Mm -hmm. That was cool meeting some of you guys. But um, yeah, a big event would be nice. Um, but we're coming back to, to recruiting from this past weekend. Obviously, we've got a commitment from Judah Pru uh, Pruitt, who is yes. being brought in actually as a defensive lineman. Um, uh, we originally thought an offensive guard, but we'll kind of see there. Uh, Seems like everyone thought that. Yeah. How else did recruiting uh, go this weekend for the football team? Yeah. I mean, I, it sounds like everything went pretty good. They had a, uh, another visitor on campus in, oh, geez, I can't remember his name. Jason Patterson, if I recall, James Patterson. Hold on. I got to find this. Jason Patterson. Um, he's a Florida running back out of uh, Sneed High School, Sneed's High School down in Florida. Um, I'm going to be honest. I have no idea where that is in Florida, but I, I spoke with him for a little bit. Very excited about the visit. Got to meet the staff. Another guy that mentioned Matt Walp, including Judah, Judah Pruitt as well, as uh, one of his like main coaches and contacts, which is which is interesting because Matt Walp's developing into like a director of recruiting at this point. Um, his name's being mentioned a ton by kids. I think it, it was a really good get from them to get the arch the former Archbishop Wood head coach on uh, on staff um, in the role whatever role he's in. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, he scheduled uh, Jason Patterson scheduled an official visit for the first weekend in June. I think it's June second. Is that Friday? Um, so he's going to be on campus. Uh, he, he loved everything. Like I, I can't rave about this. Enough. He couldn't rave about it enough when I was talking to him. He loved everything about this visit. Um, they also hosted Jack Hines, who's a 2024 O-line, O-lineman. I'd argue, uh, he's probably favoring Rutgers right now. I'm like really close to future casting him. I know I did this last podcast. I won't do it right now, but I'm probably going to do it right <laughs> after the podcast and future cast him to Rutgers. Uh, they hosted a Duke commit in Lawrenceville prep uh, corner, Austin Stoll. Thought that was a little interesting. He got a Duke offer like, I want to say a year ago and just committed like on the spot. He was ready to go. Um, so it, he's kind of still feeling things out, still seeing what else is available. I don't think Rutgers offered him yet, but they're close to. Uh, one other name, I'd say probably the last big name of the list was Monty Keener. He's a 6'6", 220 tight end out of Michigan, Linden, Michigan. I know when I put Linden on the boards, everyone's like, go Tigers. And it's like, no, <laughs> wrong Linden. Uh, but yeah, no, he was on campus this weekend. He had a really good time. He's got a tight relationship with Allrich. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he scheduled an official visit soon too. So that, that's really it for recruiting. They're going to host a bunch of dudes on Saturday for the spring game. I know Crumpler. Um, damn, I forgot his first name. But I want it's Algy Crumpler's nephew, the former tight end for the Falcons. Uh, he's kind of favoring Rutgers right now. Um, I'd probably say I'd be close to future casting him. I'm just kind of waiting to see what else we can learn about him first. He's one I know... Uh, who else? They're hosting someone else this weekend. I think his name's Derek Plack. He's a 2024 uh, prospect as well. I have the list in front of me and I just lost it. They're give me one sec. They're hosting. They're hosting a bunch of kids. Like there's going to be another giant list of kids. Deshaun Dotson, a four star out of Philly, is one to keep a close eye on. He's really considering staying home and going to Rutgers. Um, she's number 28 overall defensive end. So I think he's going to be a D tackle at the next level though. He's already 6'5", 260, and that's like a concern with some schools is that he's going to lose that uh, that speed off the edge when he moves to the inside because he's starting to bulk up heavier and heavier. 
Uh, Coy Beasley, I forgot about him too. He's going to be on campus this Saturday. He's a 2024 safety recruit out of uh, LaSalle High School in Ohio, not the same LaSalle in Pennsylvania that uh, Sam Brown went to, but keep a real close eye on him because Rutgers are going to push for him and they're going to try to land him. We don't know if it's going to work or not, but he's a highly rated kid. He's already 5.7 uh, three stars, so that's like the highest three star you can get. Um, but there's some other schools like kind of starting to show a little bit more interest. He does have a Pittsburgh official visit scheduled and he did visit Pittsburgh. I want to say two, three weeks ago, but, um, I think Rutgers is going to get an official as well. Wouldn't it surprise me if Purdue got one and there, there's like other schools like Cincinnati, who's a local school kind of starting to show interest. They haven't offered yet, but they're starting to show interest. Indiana, Minnesota. Uh, he does have a Georgia offer technically, but I don't think it's committable. Um, and then there's always Ohio state who always keeps, keeps an eye on those kids in, in state, just in case you never know. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on, but yeah, it sounds like recruiting is actually on a little bit of an uptick now, now that, uh, spring balls are almost done. I wouldn't be surprised if you've seen one or two commits this weekend. That'd be huge. Um, yeah. obviously the spring game is a good showcase event for Rutgers football. So mm -hmm. I'd be more surprised than, uh, I'd be more surprised they didn't land any commitments this weekend than if they did land yeah. some. Um, True. additionally, uh, obviously we've talked about transfer portal, how Rutgers is probably still going to at least try to land a few guys. Uh, you're hearing tackle and wide receiver, right? Still in the portal. Yeah. They, they want an offensive tackle really bad. They want a wide receiver. You need a wide receiver one, in my opinion. And I, I think you need a tight end, but that doesn't, I don't know if they're going to go with the tight end. I think it's just wide receiver and tackle at the moment. Um, there's also a quarterback that entered the portal today in Taj yep. Boyk. Um, he wants Rutgers from what I'm told. He was third string at Virginia Tech. So it's, eh, it's a meth thing. Like, I don't think he's a starter if he comes to Rutgers. I still think it's between Wimsett and Simon in the end, but it depth purposes. It might not be the worst thing. And it's a St. Peter's prep kid. I, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one. I mean, I personally would take him. Maybe. I, I don't even know if I would take him. Just because you have three quarterbacks, you don't want to piss anyone off. Now, it's tough. If, if say, like, one of Wimsat or Simon doesn't win the job and they transfer out, then obviously you, you hit a bullock right away and it's like, hey, we need you. Come on. We just need depth at this point. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, he definitely wants Rutgers, I'm told. We'll, we'll see if uh, – doesn't sound like Rutgers is super interested at the moment, but things could change uh, on a dime in recruiting, especially with the portal now. And uh, speaking of things changing out of time with recruiting, uh, well, let's let's let that simmer a little <laughs> bit further. Um, I want to talk about the assistant coaching uh, on the basketball <clears throat> front because Richard Kent posted this morning. I don't know if anybody saw it. it says that it sounds like it's down to f around five guys. So Pike's been doing his due diligence. He's been interviewing guys. It sounds like he's he's got his list down to about five assistant coaches, which is a good sign, meaning that. There's probably, we're probably a few weeks out from the decision on who the new assistant coach in the basketball, uh, on the basketball front is. Are you hearing anything additional there? I know he keeps everything pretty close to the vest. Yeah. So it's going to be someone that's connected to Pykel or his, his staff. We've, we've kind of said that multiple times. Pike's a guy that trusts people he knows. He's not going to go really out of his circle. Yeah. Brandon Knight wasn't ever connected to Pike technically, but, um, he, he had New Jersey connections. They put him on staff. Now, now they're very close. I don't see it being someone that doesn't have a connection in some way to Steve Peichel. Um, they don't have to have a connection to any of the current recruiting targets. Uh, it's going to be a guy that's going to be a workhorse. I, I don't know exactly who it's going to be. Name-wise, I can promise you most likely it's probably not going to be Juan Dixon. So you could shut that one down <laughs> that the message board started. Uh, someone on their board said there was a rumor, um, that at EYBL, they overheard some, not even rumor. They overheard a coach saying like, yeah, I heard Juan Dixon wants the Rutgers assistant job. Like no shit. Like there's a hundred text messages to Steve the day after Hobbs left. Like I'm sure Juan Dixon was one of them, but after that whole like debacle and catfishing scandal at Coppin state, I, I don't see him coming to Rutgers. Um, that, that story would have been national headlines if that was at Rutgers. Thank God it was at Coppin State and nowhere near us, near Rutgers. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't really know where it's going to be. It's going to be interesting, though. Um, 
I think it's going to be a recruiter first and foremost, but I also think it's going to be some guy that knows a little bit about offense, or at least or at least a little bit about offense, uh, because that that was Hobbs' kind of job at the end of the day was was to fix the offense, and uh, we, as we know, it wasn't it wasn't pretty. Yeah, no, it was not. So it'd be interesting to to see who he hires and then kind of take <clears throat> from that some exposition i guess to see okay he's hiring yeah. this guy who came from this tree who runs this type of offense okay we're probably gonna run something similar or this is you know a guy known for recruiting probably more the same offensive wise so yeah um, a little I, bit I of would, bated I, breath there yeah i would kind of look at like our hot board again because we that was yep. mostly candidates that was uh, c- connected to Pykel. daniel marshall was very very close rumor wise to going to Rutgers when pike first took the job um, and he's a big man. He's done it in NBA. He has NBA rings. You could show off that to recruits and people be like, Oh yeah. my God, NBA ring. Wow. That's so cool. Um, you could, you could play up that one. Um, <laughs> he played under Pike and he, he did play under Hobbs too at UConn too, technically. But, uh, and he worked under Hobbs actually at George Washington, but it would be someone that would be an interesting one just because he's been in the G league. He kind of knows what it takes to get to that next level too. I think he's been in G league since 2021 and he's been a head coach too. Um, yep. so what the, I know someone on our board said like, Oh, look, he's going to hire another central Connecticut state guy. And it's like, technically that, that, that would be Daniel Marshall, who was the head coach of central Connecticut state. Mm-hmm. Um, the other name I'd keep a close eye on is, uh, I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong. Dave Lateo. That might be right. I don't know. Uh, the former DePaul head coach, he, he got his program to the NCAA and NIT bursts multiple times. Um, he was the former Virginia head coach as well. I just I think DePaul's an unwinnable job, and I thought he did a pretty decent job there. Uh, yep. They don't they don't have money, they don't have this. It's they're lucky as hell they're in the Big East and nowhere else. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, he did coach. Uh, he coached actually Pykele in his four years with with UConn, so it's kind of like a whole giant circle where Lateo is going to coach under him now. And it kind of replaces that Carl Hobbs role where you get an older guy, but some guy that has connections to the area, someone that knows what they're doing. And he's the current head coach of an overtime elite program. I'm sure he doesn't want to do that shit no more. It's it's nope. not fun, but uh, he he knows he has good prospects on his team. Like Tyler Bay was a phenomenal prospect. I know Bryson Tiller was a pretty good one. Not that Bryson Tiller, a uh, different one. Um, <laughs> that always throws me off too. And looking at uh, 2020, is it 2024? He's one of the top kids. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Um, then like, uh, Eli Ellis, who's another one out of North Carolina who, uh, his younger brother, like he, he coaches all these, all these like really well talented kids. Like Eli scored 51 points in a recent game. They're all super Jesus. talented. The overtime elite league is just weird. Um, he almost got DePaul at the five, like he coached 150 something, 170 games, Jesus, 170 games at DePaul over six years and had them near 500. I don't care what you say, how bad DePaul is. That's impressive. DePaul sucks. Like, yep. There's nothing good like in DePaul. But I think that was a name that you really have to keep a close eye on just because he's coached in the G League as a head coach. He's coached at Virginia as a head coach. Coached at DePaul as a head coach. And he's got UConn connections. Yep. So I, I think that's a really good name. I know Jonathan Mitchell really wants the job. That's another one. But there's really no connection to Pike. But he did coach under Tom Crean at Georgia, and he's been at Stetson for a couple of years. And I think he'd be a pretty damn good, uh, <clears throat> a pretty damn good uh, recruiter too, just because you could sell the whole Rutgers thing. I'm four star, one of the best out of New York in recent history. Um, and he played he played under Billy Donovan, who's one of the better coaches in college history in recent in recent yeah. history, I should say. Um, after that, there's a couple names there, but I just. I don't know. I don't see like a Dan Ricard really getting that much juice. And Rutgers has juice now, so you have to yep. strike while the iron's hot. You have to hit like on a Lateo or on Daniel Marshall, or or who did I just say? I just said someone else. Uh, Jonathan Mitchell, maybe, but I think those two would probably be the two names I'd go after the most. I, I'd reach out to Jay Young, but they're not gonna. He's not gonna leave a head coaching job to come return to Rutgers for, as an assistant coach. But I think those two names are really solid names. Brett McConnell. I, I think wants the Rutgers job, would take the Rutgers job. I just don't know if if Pike wants to go that route. He had an option to go that route when Jay Young left, and he didn't. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, 
So stay tuned for more news on the assistant coaching hire because that that'll be probably in the next few weeks it'll be filled. Um, but this past weekend, big event down uh, in Atlanta, the EYBL tournament. Uh, I think that's the Elite Youth Basketball League. Uh, it's a huge AAU tournament. Basically, it's a who's who of um, you know high school recruits at the 24, 25 class. Um, Rutgers had all its top targets there. Delquan Warren played in the tournament. Uh, Ace Bailey played. Dylan Harper played. Well, Ace Somerville played in a played. separate separate tournament. Summer, separate tournament. Okay, he yeah, played this weekend. But yeah. Okay. So uh, a lot of interesting news. Let's talk about how Rutgers targets fared in the EYBL before we talk about the hot rumor coming out of the EYBL. Yes. So I don't know what the final record was for Dylan Harper, but I know he did pretty well. I think he dropped twenty something in game one, uh, and that's the game that Pike watched with every other coach in college. And yeah. Like. Rutgers was out in full force at the EYBL, like mm -hmm. all of its assistants. Steve was there. Ace Bailey was there cheering teams on. He was sitting with Pike yes. and the crew. Thought uh, that was cool. Love Ace. Dude, I, I, by the time he signs with Rutgers, he might be like my favorite recruit of any sport in <laughs> Rutgers history. Yeah. Um, Friday, City Rock uh, played the Wrens, and that uh, the Wrens is uh, Dylan Harper's team, and City Rock is Delquan Warren's team. Now, Delquan didn't do anything crazy from what I was told, but – he, he had a decent game. It sounds like Harper, Harper kind of stole the show again. And then Saturday, Pike was watching him again. And so was Danny Hurley, John Shire, Nate Oates, um, Bruce Pearl. There's so many other names. There's Virginia Merrill and Indiana assistants were there. Everyone went to watch the Rams play Team Thad, who uh, features a former uh, Auburn commit and the number 26 kid, the number 56 kid, number 35 kid. And it's like, holy shit. Like, all right, these are just like, it's like a powerhouse of just yeah, yep. talent. Um, Shire's going all out. Peichel's going all out. It's it's literally those two. And I don't care what anyone else says. You could say Auburn's going to go in blah, blah, blah. Kansas. I forget who the, th oh, Indiana, who I completely forgot about. I don't see any of them as threats. I think it's Rutgers or Duke, and I'm I'm leaning Rutgers still. I really think Rutgers is doing great here. And Ace Bailey front and center. Ace Bailey took time out of his day to go basically recruit Dylan and watch him play. Like it's basically what the Riot Squad did for uh for Cliff, what they did for Paul, what they did for uh who they do it for recently. They did it for someone. I can't remember who, but they did for someone. uh just the all out push. Yeah, it's just an all like the riot squad went. So they saw, always do. Oh, yeah. they, it was Dylan. Duh, it was Dylan. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, the riot squad went and saw Dylan um, at Kane. They went and saw Dylan at the front office event. It, it's it's literally an all out push for Harper, and that's the almost probably the final piece for the puzzle. Would they take a fifth? I don't see why not, but I, I'm not going to guarantee they're going to take a fifth either, because it's already a pretty pretty stacked class. Um, who else? Lathan Somerville. Um, he had, I think he finished three and one on the weekend, if I recall correctly. Uh, he had, he had a pretty good game. Uh, I forget who it was against. I can't remember the team names. There's so many random teams. Yeah, but, there uh, the team names. There's so many names, but it's it's insane. But uh, yeah. Oh, hold on. Dogs. Um. Yeah. So yeah, no. Uh, Lathan had a pretty good game. I had one guy actually reach out to me and say he doesn't think Lathan's potential is that high, and I was like, all right, dude. I, I don't know if we're watching. I don't know if we're watching the same guy, but he's been in the industry right. for about thirty years now. And I was like, "You realize the Big Ten like hasn't adapted at all, like to today's yep. game. Like they still play back down big man, and that's kind of what Lathan is. And he's just developing an, a mid range game, and he's developing an outside shot now. And it's like, what do you see that I don't see? Like I don't right. get it." Mind you, he's like, yeah, you know, I covered his dad in high school, and I'm like, all right, that that you don't need to tell me that. Now I know how old you really are. <laughs> uh, but I think I think Lathan fits pretty well. I think he's in today's Big Ten that doesn't change at all. And plus, I mean, I shouldn't even say that because he can put the ball on the floor. Like yep. he's he's a good big man. He's a little bulky, he's a little slow, but like that's fine. You can make that work. Um, and yep. people saying he's going to redshirt. <laughs> I almost said, shut the fuck up. Shut up. <laughs> um, like, just stop with that. That's a, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about four stars, top 100 kids red shirting at Rutgers now. What? It's insane. Like, stop. It's absolutely insane. So no, that's, that's not happening. But anyway, moving on. Um, yeah. There's a bunch of rumors going on about Rutgers too, that we can, we can talk about. 
Yeah. So uh, coming out of this weekend, it seemed like, and you heard this from a couple different sources, um, that Rutgers was actually a dark horse to land uh, recent, uh, recently back on the market, yeah. New Jersey kid, top 10 kid in the country, Mackenzie McBacco, uh, former Duke signee who just got released from his LOI after uh, Kyle Filipowski was brought back. What are you hearing on the Mackenzie McBacco situation? So it seemed like, number one, he was going to Duke. Um, he obviously backed off that decision. It was right when Filipowski announced that he's returning. I don't know how much, honestly, I know everyone wants to play it up like that was a big factor, but apparently it wasn't as big a factor as you think. Like this was in the works way before Filipowski's announcement. Um, so he is he is back on the market. He's open to recruiting. Everything's hush hush with his recruitment. Like it's like him, his family, and like I want to say two or three coaches uh, in his like tight knit circle that he's going through. They're going to take visits secretly. No one's going to know about him. He might have already taken them for all we know. Uh, it did seem like UNC was one name to keep a close eye on. Then it sounded like Louisville was making a huge push. And then this weekend, people are talking about Rutgers making a push for the former Gil St. Bernard slash Roselle Catholic uh, star. Now, this, this is huge because if, if Rutgers yeah. could pull this one off and it would be insane. I've been hyping this up recruitment wise since like Ace Bailey committed, I guess, even before then. But if you have Mig Baco, got it, got pronounced <laughs> it right. Um, if you have Mig Baco on this team, well, forget about questioning who the starting four is. There's your starting four right there. Put yeah. him next to Cliff, a guy that could shoot lights out from beyond the arc and can shoot kind of from anywhere, can do just about anything. Play two through four, really. Yeah, can, can literally play anywhere. And then you put Gavin Griffiths, who might be the best shooter in his class, like at the forward spot next to him. Then you put Noah Fernandez, who can kind of score a little bit from just about anywhere. Then Fernandes. you put Cam Spencer, who I'm, was I... probably the best scorer on the team last year. Oh, and there's this guy named Cliff Amori <laughs> that would be down low. Mm -hmm. Wow. Holy shit. That would be fucking nutty. Who yeah, so let's paint a <clears throat> Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about like where this is coming from. So apparently, a hot rumor from the EYBL this past weekend was Rutgers was making a, a push silently to, to land Migbako. Um, yeah. Now, this was Not brought so to you by several different people today asking, are you hearing the same thing about Migbako? Yeah. Um, uh, is, is Rutgers involved? What are you hearing? And this was like a, wait, wait. Are we talking about the same person here? McKenzie McBacco, top 10 kid I, in the country. Yeah, like Travis Graff used to write for the Rutgers site, now with the Louisville site, right? Mm -hmm. Or he's the national basketball guy for rivals. Yeah, he, he, uh, not anymore. He's now an official top scout for Made Hoops. It's like one of those okay. companies. But he uh, he was with rivals as, as recent as like a week ago, two weeks ago, I think it was, he moved. But uh, I trust Travis more than anyone. He, he's given me tons of insight info. And he posted on the Louisville board hearing that Rutgers is – the talk is is that Rutgers is making a push for him. And if they if they can land – I'm telling you, if they can land him, like, holy shit. Do, people don't understand how good this kid is. Like, there's talk about him going to the G League and just saying, fuck it, I'm not going to college anymore. But Rutgers is going to try to say, hey, come spend that one year here. Come play with us. Come um, come stay with New Jersey. Make the whole New Jersey thing go on. Keep going. And – it's just this kid's had has every offer you can imagine in the book. He was number six nationally. I think he was as high as number number two at one point. Um, at least for us, I think he's a stud. He was choose, choosing between before he committed to Duke. I think it was uh, Louisville, North Carolina, Saint Saint John's is back in the picture now. I forgot yeah. to mention too. Rick Pitino, Slick Rick is always going to be there now. It's he's going to be pain in the ass recruiting. Um. But yeah, also the, and, and Memphis, Penny Hardaway is making a push as well. I know we our uh, national dude posted an article about 10, 12 days ago when the Mabaku Migbako Migbako oh, news came out, um, and and honestly had those four programs. It didn't have Rutgers mentioned at all. And now we're here, and Rutgers is like seriously involved here, and we'll we'll see how how much happens or what happens. I know everyone's going to be like stalking his like social media accounts now to see where he's visiting, but he, he's not dumb. Like he's not going to post that shit. I don't I don't think at least no. Everything shocked. is very seemingly uh, buttoned up with the second recruitment. Um, yeah. We haven't heard of any place he's visited. 
uh, I just got a confirmation from a source that who's high up in the AAU uh, circuit locally that he's also hearing that Rutgers is very much in play with them. Um, and that was also talked about this past weekend. So a lot of people are hearing this. So I feel like there's a lot of smoke to it. Who knows? I, I've heard a lot that he's going to end up potentially going pro too. So yeah. I think who knows what's going to happen, but Rutgers is clearly involved here. But I, I feel like I saw something recently that they're trying to make it so if they go to the GUA out of high school, they can't go pro right away. I don't know how how much that would, that would play hurt. a factor. That but... would hurt the G League a lot, honestly. Yeah. Um, I got to I gotta look more into that. There was something going on there. I forget exactly what it was. But um, regardless, Rutgers is making a push. Like that's, that's what we know as of right now. We don't know how serious it is. It sounds like it's pretty damn serious, though. Um, I'm assuming yep. they're going to try to get him on campus. He has connections to Rutgers a little bit because Gil St. Bernard's, he was at Gil St. Bernard's for three years, I believe, before going to Roselle this past last season. Yep. And it just sounds like he wants to to just start wherever he goes. And, I mean, obviously, there, there's a big, pretty big hole at the four right now. I know Mag yeah. will come back and will probably be the starter. But if you have McBaco, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, I think regardless, if we get McBaco, you know, it doesn't really fully matter who starts. To be to be totally honest with you guys, like, yeah, you need like a, a probably an eight to nine man rotation to really make a, a big run, um, both in the Big Ten and in the tournament. So, if we have a bunch of guys who are playing twenty to twenty five minutes coming off the bench, like that's essentially like the same as a starter. Like you need that rotation, and we saw that this year when we didn't have deep enough rotation how much that kind of can sink your team yeah um, well i know i said griffiths as a starter but if you get mcbaco you probably put mag at the three and let him be mm. your your defender and then you don't need add that much scoring at the three so maybe griffiths could come in as a four or the three maybe you even play small ball and put mcbaco at the five yeah um it, the, the realm of possibilities in lineups with with him on the roster it makes everything a hell of a lot different and you went from maybe getting projected to the NCAA tournament to yeah you're in yeah yeah i mean yeah. i already felt really good about this team going i do the, too uh... yeah I, I think they're gonna be better than most people think and I, and I don't think they're getting enough credit at the moment but it really depends on on the big man situation like what's gonna go on with uh with cliff is he going to come back? What's what's the backup big man situation looking like? Is Nadangu part of your roster? Is he not? Is Wolfolk going to take that next step? Um, I think offensively, obviously, they're going to be a lot better just because you get a scoring guard in Fernandes yep. and uh, Cam Spencer another year, and it's going to open up things for him, I think. Okay, he has returned. I didn't even mention Paul at all, and I forgot all about him, but... He, him coming back, playing a different role, I think. I think he'll play more of a three facilitator type role. I know it's positionless, but I say three just because the two guard spots are locked up, in my opinion. Yep. Um, yeah, no, this team has tons and tons of potential. And if you add a McBaco to the lineup, it's like, oh, okay, that potential went from like here to here. Yeah, and I did want to bring up one other thing. So the at Nike Hoop Summit this past year, so this was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, they had an event where it was the USA – like the best team of under 18 uh, players on, on the USA versus the world. So kids who are not from the USA. Um, so on the USA team, they had guys like Isaiah Collier, Collier who's the number one player in the country, Justin Edwards, five-star, DJ Wagner, five-star, bunch of other kids. Um, Mackenzie Mbako, 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 Jesus, um, was on the world team. He led all scores with 22 points and eight rebounds. Um, they lost the game 90 to, to, to 84, but he was the high scorer in a game that was just filled with five-star kids. So he's yeah. a very, very good player. Um, obviously, this is a developing situation. I, I I don't think any of us really did a whole ton of research on McBacco, given that uh, he didn't really seem like a realistic Rutgers target for a while. But um, yeah, so this is a story that will continue to, ve to develop over the coming days, I'm sure. So stay tuned to your Twitter feed, stay tuned to the boards, because I'm sure that there will be more on this uh, in the coming days and weeks. Um, looks like we might've lost Richie here, but I will, oh, there he is. Yep, sorry about that. Um, cat issues, dog issues. We're having every type of issue today. 
dog yeah. dog hits the Roomba, cat hits the wire, and it, everything's a mess. Um, it's all good. Yeah, I don't know if uh, what the last thing you said was. I, I lost you. Completely. No, it's just like a situation that's developing. Um, we'll have to – obviously, this this is very new news to us, uh, like this morning new news. So just stay tuned to, the, to your Twitter feed. Stay tuned to the boards because there will be more on this, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and he's a legit 6'8", six, 6'8 eight, six, eight and a half. I think he got measured at the USA thing. And I know people are talking about the Nike stuff. Um, Rutgers Adidas contract is up in June. So it is. Hear me out. Um, there was a rumor that it might be re-upped for another year at least. Nothing's public. But, I mean, hey, there, there's a lot of rumors out there. Maybe Nike might be uh, back at, back with Rutgers again. So we'll see. We will see. Um, but we've covered a lot here today, Rich. Do we have anything else that you wanted to hit on before we sign off? Uh, no, I just watched the highlights from that game and uh, like in the background. And Jesus. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a dude. Yeah, he is one hundred percent a dude. Big man, he is not your typical six eight skinny forward. He's he's got some muscle to him, like some real tone. Like I, I'd argue he could probably go to the league right now, but obviously you you can't, like because that's yeah. not the rules. And the rules are the rules. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think this is a this could be a phenomenal get for Rutgers. Um, wrestling wise, Chris Cannon is going to decide this week. I was told. Uh, he visited Rutgers this past weekend. He's down to Rutgers, Michigan, or Penn State. Not optimistic in Rutgers' chances right there. Um, but we'll see. Maybe maybe they could pull a rabbit out of their hat. Uh, I, I still think uh, as much as they would love for him to come on board, he was gonna, he's technically a 133 two-time All-American, but he's, they want him as a 141, and I don't, I don't think that uh, that's going to work out personally. But we'll, we'll see. Rutgers uh, still going to hit the portal. Then their, their finals for Griffith. It's Griffith. Griffith, Griffith, I forget. There's Griffith, Shane Griffith, and then there's Griffith. Like it's very confusing. Yep. So Shane Griffith uh, has Rutgers as finalist, and uh, it sounds like they have a pretty good shot. Yeah, who's obviously the on? It would probably be the biggest transfer commitment ever, and that says a lot considering we got Nick Soriano who won a national title yeah. uh, when he was at Rutgers. But as a kid who's won two national titles at Stanford, probably would be the favorite to win a third um, this upcoming season too. Yeah, so we'll we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, good news for Rutgers recruiting on football front, basketball front, potentially on the wrestling front. Some good stuff going on. Um, what a time to be a Rutgers fan! What um, a time to be alive! Um, what a time! The only other thing I do want to mention is uh, you guys have been great with the reviews. Um, keep it up because I, I don't want to be number two in terms of total podcast reviews. Right now we're number mm -hmm. two on most apps. Um, so keep it up. Keep giving us those five stars. Um, give us a, a little, I like some of the write-ups too. Some of the write-ups are huge. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll do some kind of contest where we'll pick a, a person, a random person from who gave a written review in, in iTunes and uh, give some kind of giveaway. Um, yeah. We have um, we're almost, there. almost at 3k. As soon as we get that 3k mark on YouTube, I'm telling you, I have a couple giveaways I want to, I want to do. We're very, very close. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And uh, one one more thing I forgot completely. Um, quote, unquote, this guy DM'd me the other day and said he wants to be known as the dude. The dude. Okay. Gave me some info on Oscar Palmquist's destination. Um, Oscar took an official visit to IPFW. If you guys don't know what that is, it's Indiana Purdue University of Fort Worth. Fort Worth, I think. I forget. Um I think it's Fort Worth. I feel like Fort Wayne. I was close. You know, I, I knew Fort, Fort Worth was Texas. Damn it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he um, he uh, took a visit there this past weekend. So the Montana thing is not a done deal. So he he's still looking around. Um, and he, he uh, he's also the guy that uh kind of gave me the info about the uh, the Stetson stuff with uh, Stetson assistant coach John Mitchell being interested. So he quote unquote wants to be called the dude. Um, <laughs> Very confident that Jonathan Mitchell, if hired, would offer a lot more than Hobbs, which, I mean, fair enough. I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, so shout out to the dude. Well, to all the dudes out there, thank you once again. Richie's covered a lot. Uh, I'm not going to hound you for more of you stuff. Yeah, thank good. you guys for listening. Thanks for 
being uh, so supportive of an audience. Um, we will probably be back on later this week to probably discuss more rumors um, and preview spring the spring game. game. Yeah. Uh, but for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast, signing off.